Hello beautiful people, my name is Jackson Doyle, I'm a wildlife biologist, and well on the internet lately there has been a very interesting comparison or hypothetical scenario taking place, and it is rather would you choose to see a bear or a strange man you don't know in the woods? It's a very uh, infamous topic with a lot of different opinions, so I wanted to take a look at it from a wildlife biologist's perspective, from a scientist's perspective, and see what the data shows and which one might be more preferable based on those statistics. So, without further ado, let's dive in. In the beginning, eight women were asked which they would rather encounter in the woods, a man or a bear. And seven out of eight of those women would choose the bear over a man which is maybe alarming to some people to hear. What's even more alarming and s sad to see and, and scary to read is how many women on social media would also prefer the bear over a man, with some comments saying things like, you would know what to expect from a bear over a strange man you do not know. So it does beg the question, statistically, which would you rather prefer, a man or a bear in the woods? And it's exactly what we're going to look at. So first, we're going to dive into some human statistics. We're going to look at some numbers on human uh, sexual assaults, rapes, and murders, both depending on men or women. It's a, not a fun topic to discuss, but it is necessary to look at to really get a good idea of which you would prefer for this hypothetical scenario. According to a 2002 United States Department of Justice report, 91% of rape and sexual assault victims were women, and 99% of the perpetrators were men. Globally, one in three women state that they have been beaten, coerced into sex, or otherwise abused in their lifetime, often by a family member or a partner. And among the, this, uh, the developmentally disabled, the numbers don't get much better. Up to 83% of women and 32% of men have been sexually assaulted. So it is a rampant issue in modern society, unfortunately. Even more unfortunately is the fact that only 2% of rapists are actually caught and brought to justice. According to RAIN, the Rape, Abuse, and Incest National Network, 9 out of 10 rape victims are women, and 1 in 6 American women have been a victim of attempted or completed rape. Alarmingly, every 68 seconds, another American is sexually assaulted. If that doesn't show how bad of an issue this is in our society, I don't know what does. It is horrifying to read, and it's horrifying to know. Now let's take a look at some homicide statistics. So according to the United States Department of Justice in a 2010 study, 90.3% of murder offenders were men. However, on the other side of the coin, 77.4% of the victims were also men, which is an interesting number to look at and take into account. Another important note is that 37.5% of women who were murder victims in scenarios where the perpetrator was known were murdered by their husbands or their boyfriends, which is a very alarming number to see. Overall, when we take all these numbers into account, it is much more likely for women to be dominated by men than for men to be dominated by women. And domestic violence is predominantly committed by men against women, with women being victims 11 times more often than men. Now let's jump into the bear aspect of the equation, which arguably is more fun for me to discuss and less of a just depressing topic, even in the context of Molly. What bears are we considering for this hypothetical scenario? Arguably, polar bears are one of the most dangerous bears for a human being to encounter. Their status is an obligatory carnivore, meaning that their diet is almost exclusively considering of meat from other animals. A lot of their hunting behavior is taking down seals and other large pinnipeds such as walrus. The mortality rate for mauling attacks from polar bears is just around 27%. So over a quarter of people attacked by polar bears will die from the resulting mauling. That is a frightening number to consider for polar bears. However, polar bears and interactions with people are extremely rare. The environments that polar bears are found in are icy, cold, barren wastelands not conducive to human settlement. So they, while they do attack in Canada and there are interactions in Alaska, it's just not very common. Also considering the fact that this hypothetical scenario takes place in a forest and not an icy tundra is a good example for why we should not be using polar bears in this equation. Instead, let's look at bears that are more commonly interacted with in a forest setting, such as a black bear and the grizzly bear. First, let us start with the smaller of the two, the adorable, but still respect your distance with black bear. So the American black bear is about three feet tall, one on four legs. 
and the males weigh between 210 and 315 pounds, so still a very large bear. Females weigh between 135 and 200 pounds. Since 1915, 66 people have been killed in black bear attacks in the United States. 92% of the deaths are caused by males. So at first look, it may seem that male bears are responsible for more danger than the females, like more attacks are caused by males. However, if we look at the study and look at the numbers more closely, we'll find that that's not the case. It's important to note that when it comes to black bear attacks, only 14% are actually fatal. So it's just not very common for a black bear to actually kill a person in an altercation. According to a 35-year running study in Alaska, less than 10% of all black bear attacks were predatory, where the bear was trying to eat the person. A study from 2000 to 2017 in the lower 48 states found that 52% of black bear attacks were defensive, and 85% of these defensive attacks were carried out by females. And of those females, 91% were sows with cubs. So as it turns out, Black bear mothers are very defensive of their cubs and will attack a person if she perceives them as a threat. Female black bears do attack and most black bear attacks are in fact not predatory, unlike the common belief that if a black bear attacks you, it's wanting to eat you. Interestingly, a bear's maximum size was not indicated for its potential for violence. Biologist Stefan Herrera was quoted saying, young males are more risk-taking and more aggressive. And that's definitely the pattern here. It fits bears, men, and a number of other species. So, boar black bears are more dangerous than the sows. So even amongst other species, men can be pigs. I'm sorry, it was too good of a pun not to make. In over 109 years, black bears have caused only 66 deaths across North America, despite a population of around 900,000 across over 41 states and most Canadian provinces. That's less than one death per year on average. In contrast, people are 167 times more likely to be murdered by men ages 18 to 24 and 60,000 times more likely to be murdered and killed by somebody than by a black bear. Black bears tend to be more afraid of humans than we are of them. You are vastly more likely to be killed by domestic dogs, bees, or even lightning than you are by a black bear. So let's look at another bear, the other bear that we are focusing on today, the grizzly bear. Grizzly bears, on the other hand, are considerably larger, with males weighing between 200 and 700 pounds, and females 200 to 400 pounds. They stand about 3.5 feet tall at the shoulder, and their claws are roughly 2 to 4 inches long, about double the length of a black bear's claws. But how much more dangerous is a grizzly bear on average than a black bear? Well, there's a common number thrown around that grizzly bears are 20 times more dangerous than a black bear. But in reality, if we actually look at true scientific studies, grizzly bears only lead to twice as many mauling deaths as a black bear. And in the lower 48, you are only 2.47 times more likely to be mauled by a grizzly than a black bear. So yes, they are statistically more dangerous to humans than black bears, but it's not an astronomical jump as some are led to believe. A study from 2000 to 2015 looked at 183 grizzly bear attacks across North America, 24 of which being fatal. If we look at the relationship between attacks and the overall human slash bear density for the North American regions in this study, we find a slight correlation between grizzly bear density and the number of attacks. Interestingly though, the actual uh, volume and density of human society did not show an increase in bear attacks. Globally, the study found that attacks have increased significantly over time and were more frequent at high bear and low human population densities. However, improved data collection in recent decades may also contribute to the apparent increase in attacks over time. Between the 1700s and the 1900s, data collection just wasn't as rigorous and as in-depth and detailed as it is today. So likely there are many bear attacks that happened back then that we just don't know about. Over the course of human domination on the planet Earth, bear populations, like at many other large mammal species, plummeted. However, globally, bear populations are now recovering in a lot of areas from the near extinction of the 18th and 20th centuries. 
Although some subpopulations do still remain endangered, and in several cases they are in close proximity to society, leading to increased human-bear conflicts in some areas. In total, there have been over 180 fatal wild grizzly and black bear attacks in North America since 1784, averaging to only 0.9 deaths per year. While the data before 2000 is scarce and less reliable, these figures pale in comparison to the more common and unexpected causes of death, like heart disease, which is 697,000 cases per year, vehicular accidents, 42,900 per year, and domestic dogs, 30,000 per year, or even hornet, bee, and wasp stings, which are 62 per year. Even deer cause more deaths than bears, with over 100 fatalities in the year 2022. So overall, bear attacks and associated deaths do not occur as often as one might suspect, let alone as often as murders and sexual assaults in modern society. But we see so many more people per day than we do bears. What if we magnified the number of bears we meet to the number of new faces we see per day, which is roughly 40 new faces and 20 familiar faces per day, according to a study by Dr. Anastasia Stolzenberg? Well, honestly, I don't really know how that would change numbers. It's just not a natural circumstance that would ever be found in the wild to have that many bears in your path. However, if someone really wanted to do an extremely stupid, dangerous, and unnecessary study like that where they place 40 to 60 bears in front of some poor person's daily routine, I would advise them just not to do that because that's ridiculous. What we can do, though, that's more humanitarianly safe, is look at an environment where we have large volumes of people and large volumes of bears for a natural situation. And what better place to look at than Yellowstone National Park with annual recorded numbers of visitors, numbers of bears, and the overall number of people hiking and being in actual bear country. Surely this is the best chance to demonstrate the potential danger if many, many people are suddenly thrusted into the land of the bears. Well, Yellowstone National Park has a resident population of roughly 500 to 600 black bears and a population of 150 to 200 grizzly bears who have home ranges wholly or partly inside the national park. What does that mean? Well, the actual greater Yellowstone ecosystem far exceeds the national park boundary. So think of the park as this box. The actual ecosystem extends way beyond its borders. So the park is around 2.2 million acres. The actual ecosystem is between 12 and 22 million acres, up to a 900% increase in overall size. So the overall number of grizzly bears that live within this ecosystem in total is roughly 965 grizzly bears. Between 1990 and 2017, Yellowstone National Park saw an annual number of 3.1 million recreational visitors. That totaled an 85 million people. In 2016 alone, almost 45,000 backpackers were in the park borders moving around, with 77% of them visiting during the peak bear foraging activity months of June, July, and August. Despite these high numbers, only eight bear-caused human fatalities have occurred in Yellowstone between 1872 and 2018, seven from grizzlies and one from a black bear. Interestingly, 75% of the eight victims were men. The risk of being killed by a grizzly bear in Yellowstone National Park is one fatality per 26.2 million park visits. Most fatal attacks were due to surprising the bears, bears conditioned with food, and only one classified as a predatory attack. While bear attacks, are often taken very seriously with an exhaustive investigation done and the bear involved usually being killed. Sexual assault face a different reality. One in four women will experience sexual assault in their lives, yet less than 5% of assaults are reported to the police, and one in five of reported cases are deemed baseless or unfounded by law enforcement, which is a very depressing number. In a study by Dr. Jody Murphy Oikonen, which apologies if I mispronounced that, 23 survivors reported facing insensitivity, a lack of investigation and follow-up, victim blaming from law enforcement. As one popular comment puts it, in the unlikely event that a bear attacks you, at least you will be believed that a bear attacked you. After reviewing all the data to make this video, if I was a woman, I would probably choose the bear. However, I am not a woman, so my opinion just does not carry as much weight. 
I'm not going to tell you exactly what to believe here. I'm just going to show you the information that I found and my own personal opinion based off reading that information. But there is a lot of data out there. There are so many numbers on these both of these very serious issues. So I encourage you to read up on it yourself, look into the data, look at what scientists are saying and what different institutions researching these issues are finding, and make your own conclusions based off of that. I very much appreciate you watching this video and I hope you learned something new today. Please review the sources, I've attached them below in the description. There is so much more information about this topic and this hypothetical scenario to read about. If you've experienced sexual assault or know someone that has, know that you or their experience is valid and treatment is out there. Recovery is enhanced when the victim is believed and supported and when advocacy and treatment services are available to them. So please seek help, you are not alone. If you do hike in bear uh, country and you camp in bear country, Carry bear spray, make noises, hike with a friend, use proper bear safety precautions, protect your food, put it in bear proof containers. Don't be an idiot. Bears are majestic, beautiful, and intelligent animals, and it is a privilege that we still live in a world where they exist and we can experience them. However, they are still wild animals and have the potential to be extremely dangerous. So if you get attacked by a bear because you weren't following rules that a first grader could follow, that is your fault. It puts your life at risk, other people's lives at risk, and the bear's life at risk too. So if you want to live in an ecosystem with bears and you do like bears, follow the rules. Don't be an idiot. The world can be wonderful even when odds are against us. So, you know, don't be dumb. We're all in this together. Thanks for watching.